Welcome to 20 Minutes and On News English. This is Nadia Naki with you and today we have a special guest, Tamur Salim Jagra, former minister of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa for health and finance. These days there's a lot uh, that PTI has to say. PTI feels they are the aggrieved party. Pakistan Tehreek Insaf is not the same Tehreek Insaf that we all know, especially post 9th May. Uh, a lot many people we saw leaving Tehreek Insaf joining other parties some of them just decided to leave politics but whatever is left of Tehreek Insaf is still demanding elections first they were demanding Khyber Pakhtunkhwa in Punjab assembly's elections within the 90 days as the constitution stipulates and now the general elections but the question is even when the elections are taking place yes they are not taking place within 90 days i mean up till now we don't see them happening but whenever it is going to take place as the election commission has announced it's going to be in the last week of january will tehreek e insaf be able to participate the way they participated in 2018 the key question to temur salim jagra thank you so much for joining us temur So yes, uh, with whatever structure is left of Tehreek-e Insaf, and you demanding elections as soon as possible and within 90 days, how will Tehreek-e Insaf actually participate? We don't see you uh, and others like you in Tehreek-e Insaf actually being, you know, accessible to public. Uh, there's a couple of things. First, the reason you don't see us accessible to the public. is because the state has decided to weaponize the law against one political party effectively dismantling whatever remains of democracy there are remaining however despite that and you talked of defections from the party and indeed there are defections from the party in the month of may and june i think the fact that at the moment there is really only one party that has consistently been calling for elections to happen whether it is in the provinces of khyber pakhtunkhwa and punjab or whether it is nationally that will tell you how much of the party remains how much of the confidence of the people in the party remains even in unfair and unfree elections because it's clear we're not going to be allowed to fight as openly uh, as you would in a democratic process but even with a hand tied behind our back and the leg tied along with it i think you will find that there's only one party that actually enjoys enough popular support and will win elections and that is imran khan's pakistan tehreek e insaf there's no doubt about it and if there was any doubt i refer you to the recent Gallup survey uh, mm-hmm. that was published and that shows Imran Khan's popularity at 60%. You know, surveys and yes, the popularity. Nobody is denying the popularity of the party and your leader. There's an election commission of Pakistan, the constitutional body, that has said that will provide equal space to all the political parties, and that includes Tehreek e Insaf. My question: Let's forget about all what is happening around, whether you you believe in the election commission of Pakistan or other problems that exist. But what is the party structure? You know, you you should have a party structure. You should have people in place where you're going to be distributing the tickets when the elections happen. So the question is that within the party or the party itself doesn't exist. so you cannot complain that you weren't allowed to participate in the elections do you have enough people oh we have more than enough people if you want to look at this numerically uh, and i think take the major province of punjab although i am from khyber pakhtunkhwa and we looked at this out of 300 provincial assembly candidates because they were awarded tickets uh, because at one point the date for the punjab provincial election was announced only about 40 of them 260 still stand with the party now they are quiet but they are quiet for a reason they are quiet because you know and i know that uh, each of these people is pursued by the state they are arrested put in cases forced to do forced press conferences in some cases their businesses are shut down in some cases are their families are badgered one of our legislators from south punjab his son was taken and not released and there were allegations of torture until the son was really until the gentleman uh, gave a statement to the authorities that he was going to leave the party now look there's an easy way if the state does not want pakistan tehreek e insaf to participate in the elections follow the process of law and ban the party i do that and we won't be able to participate but if that is not the case all of these tactics have never worked in pakistan's history they will never work now and for people like me who are fresh into politics 
right? Standing with the party has now become about a lot more than just Imran Khan. It's about playing our little bit to try and safeguard democracy and to try and safeguard the principle enshrined in the constitution that every Pakistani has the right to associate with any political movement or any political party that they like. We will okay. stand and inshallah we will win. But then, what, then the question is that if, if people from Tariq and Saf have been coerced, they have been, you know, forced to leave the party and the party has dismantled in, the, in, in a certain manner. Yes, we do see people coming on, doing the press conferences, saying that either they leave politics or they leave uh, Tariq and Saf. How come you are here still? And how come you were not forced? Nadia, there's a history of this in our country. And unfortunately, the fact that there's a history has almost encouraged the sort of politicians to come on and participate in politics who look at politics in the most pragmatic way possible. And I hope that my generation, that our generation, that the generations following it, whether they belong to Pakistan, Tariq Saf or other parties, can display the character uh, that this is our country and whatever political movement we choose to be represented by, right, that we stay in it for reasons of principle and not choose to jump from one ship to another simply because the wind is blowing that way. That's right. not useful for anyone. I can't blame everyone who's left the party as well. It's not just incarceration or forced press conferences. As we speak, six of our mainstream leaders have been arrested illegally and disappeared. Yes. The issue of enforced disappearances is a long-standing one in Pakistan, but one right. that was never picked up by the mainstream because it happened on the fringes of the country, in Balochistan and in the tribal districts of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa mainly. You would have the odd journalist picked up and then released the next day. But it's the first time that we're looking at political enforced disappearances because at this point, the people who perhaps had something to hide, who perhaps did not have the character or wanted to leave willingly, left in the first month. At this point, I would hope that you agree with me beyond Pakistan Tariq Saf, beyond Imran Khan, that basically what we need in terms of supporting the democratic process in Pakistan, that we need people to legitimately stand by the parties that they represent. Absolutely. And if anyone has done anything wrong, whether that's in 9th May, whether that is before or that is after, the due process of law needs to be followed to incriminate them. Nothing more, nothing less. That's what civilized societies are built on. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm completely for it that, you know, anybody who's done anything against the law, you try them, give them due process of law. And yes, enforced disappearances, nobody can support. But supporting democracy, when, when now people like you are saying supporting democracy, there is a history of 2018 elections. All those parties who either, uh, you know, do not get or come on the wrong side of the establishment, then tend to talk about supporting democratic practices and supporting democracy. When you look back, Temur, what's that mistake that Tariqe Insaf did and shouldn't have done in order not to come on the wrong side of the establishment and face what you're facing if, if it is the reason? I can give you my personal opinions uh, on all of this because if you look at any political party in Pakistan uh, in the mainstream, we're not represented by the strict definitions of the left and the right that you have in uh, the West. But the one thing that differentiates Pakistan Tariq and Saf for people like me, and particularly for people like me who come from a traditional political background but made an explicit choice, okay. right, to join this rather than one of the traditional parties was that if there's one thing that I think differentiates Pakistan Tariq and Saf from other parties, it is the hope of the people of Pakistan that PTI represents an effort to break the status quo. So if you ask me about mistakes we made, every time we've fallen short on that standard, we could have done better. But no political party is a monolith. And the one mistake that I think we typically make in dialogues like this, you haven't posed the question, but let me pose it myself, right? How is it, I apologize for the breaks, let me just no put problem. this phone on silent. How is it that Pakistan Tariq-e-Insaf 
right or individuals in pakistan tehreek e insaf are now talking a different language to perhaps what they used to before right? right i'm sure some of it can be justified i'm sure that some of it can't be justified in the same way that if we talk of a democracy then there should be no role for the establishment but one of the reasons the establishment has a role is our failings as politicians but that does not mean that we always use the past to convolute a conversation about the future given okay. the economic crisis that we are in given the multifaceted crisis that we are in we need a future where the politicians the judiciary the establishment play their roles in their road domains for a democratic pakistan that's what the constitution defines for an economically vibrant pakistan and all i can do at this point mm-hmm. is to play my role in that and to be vocal about whatever i need to be vocal about while being underground mind you it's not easy i have had to stay underground for 148 days because the state will not allow me access to justice and that's all i ask for access to justice and access to the law i hope that's not asking for too much you said it rightly that you know uh, failed as politicians collectively and that's why uh, the economic crisis that we see and the administrative measures that were seen taken by the caretaker set up just look at the kind of result it's actually reaping maybe short term uh, because we do need long term policy in order to be on the right track for the progress of economy but again do you not think it is the establishment the army in particular that took up this economic uh, you know probably for progress they asked the caretaker set up to take such measures or probably they are working alongside with them so why is it that political parties in power couldn't do it because Uh, probably at that time you were looking more towards your political capital rather than the economy at uh, some point politicians do look at political capital but i'm very happy to have a discussion about difficult decisions whatever the grievances of the state against us mm. as individuals collectively to try and engineer a political process or not to do so i think it's important to recognize some of what yields positive results for example the crackdown on smuggling the crackdown on the illegal speculation on the dollars if i'm a patriotic pakistani why would i have a problem with that but what my experience and what the experience of many people who have spent a lot of time in pakistan or abroad and seen the world will tell you is that this is not sustainable ultimately difficult decisions have to be taken by politicians because we've been through plenty of these short term cycles because as far as being populist is concerned it's not that the uh, caretaker government is immune to that pressure you have ministers announcing with glee a week in advance that hopefully petrol prices will fall after a week why do they do so it's the technically the worst thing to do because you're trying to you're creating expectation in the market they do it because of populist pressure but if you talk of difficult decisions we took plenty i personally was at the heart of pension reform if in khyber pakhtunkhwa successful which now other governments are following and which is the sort where in france you had weeks and months of protests we did it uh, remember that in two years we took difficult economic reform including uh, making the state bank autonomous in terms of not raising public sector pay and yes we did that despite populist pressure not to do so what you could argue and again mm. this is a this is a personal opinion but i will say this because i think it's time to be honest is that there were decisions towards the end of our tenure that uh, instigated debate such as reducing uh, petrol prices but remember the opposition was calling for it and remember that was a time of severe political instability and therefore the one thing i would say and the lesson that i would say that we need to learn and we've all been chair leaders for this in the past is we need to give governments the time to see out their terms and if we think 5 years is too long a term i don't think it is then let's reduce the term but do it constitutionally okay. every time we break the law we set ourselves back in terms of maturing ourselves as a political entity and it's not right and the last thing that i'll say on that is hmm. that hurts us at this point in more ways than one right uh, i think it's fair to say that the army the military is the most disciplined and the most 
well established institution in the country and we should all be thankful to that but you tell me can you run any country with just one institution functioning well do you not need the judiciary to work well do you not need the bureaucracy to do well the same bureaucracy that signing 3 mpo orders all day to try and justify the arrests of uh, pti workers uh, do you not need the regulators to work well and not have femra basically be a tool for blackmail of the media rather than the justified regulation of the media do you not need the police in the same way that the army works to work as a disciplined autonomous institution we need to develop all of these institutions but they all nobody need to stops work. the political governments nobody stops the political governments in, in making these institutions stronger or making them what they sh- or, or you know letting them do their work so i think every time a political party is thrown out of gov- government that's when you start realizing you know that we need this and we need that i mean we can debate all day them more on this but lastly coming to one thing uh, what exactly in your personal opinion i'm not even talking about you know what you discuss in the core committee or probably you could even enlighten us with that that what exactly are the you know faults or problematic areas that let to you know be at the wrong side of establishment was it accountability of uh, pmln and people's party was it bad governance in punjab that was you know probably uh, not acceptable to the establishment what exactly was it this is a tricky question and in a state like ours you don't want to get into trouble but let me have a stab at it we're talking about people right? who are retired now right let me <laughs> but that shouldn't be the case right uh, those retired people said that the institution does not have a role in politics anymore and admitted that it had a role in politics anymore i think through repeated cycles of this we create the sort of bitterness in the political leadership of the country that cannot be good and a sort of pragmatism in the rest of the political leadership that basically means you just have guns for hire fronting as politicians what are the mistakes that happened on both sides i would say the number one really i think there was a perception which in hindsight i'm proud to say was wrong that pti was mishandling the economy right because when you hear all of these pmln leaders say that uh, people within the establishment reached out to them and uh, you know ask them to take over the government because they were the economic whiz kids that had transformed pakistan's economy i think on the evidence of the last 16 months the pmln's economic credentials have gone and been hit for a six uh, to use an analogy from the upcoming world cup that we all hope pakistan wins i think honestly the second thing this all boils down to is one of imran khan's qualities as a leader i don't say uh, he hasn't made mistakes we all make mistakes but the fight that imran khan has i don't think any of our other political leaders do and i think once imran khan's government fell no one expected him uh, to push back in the way that he did okay. i think that has been unprecedented and look imran khan is a fighter we have 20 years of his sports career to show that we have 27 years of his political career to show that one officer uh, in the police that shall remain unnamed uh, said privately he's the first deposed prime minister to push back against the abuse of the law against him having said all that nadia the reality is that different institutions need to work with each other if we are going to create a functioning democracy it is true that we will get allow me to finish this that we will never get to a solution simply finger pointing in the past and it goes back and again i'll refer to the latest gallup survey on the one hand you have clearly the most popular political party and on the other hand if you look at all the civil institutions the same same survey points to you that the institution that people trust the most is in terms of the job that it does is the army the most incredibly stupid thing that we can do as a country and that's what pdm seems to have successfully done is to pit the most popular party in the country against the state that is not good for the state that is not good for us obviously but it's not good for democracy in pakistan we've had crises before and i honestly genuinely think it's time to heal because i think fixing pakistan's 
triad of problems is a lot more important than whatever personal grievances we have between us. Okay, so for healing, do you not think in last 30 seconds that that when you say that you're ready to sit down with people to talk, that means the institution, of course, but with all the other political parties, even if it is Nawaz or Shahbaz Sharif or Asif Ali Zardari, maybe you don't like them for a personal reason, but they are politicians and they do have their support too. I would personally say that there's always ways to talk and I think PTI always reached out to talk on elections. I think politicians are a strange breed where you're always competing for the same price, which is government. And I hope that at some point politics matures. But if you ask me about the biggest disappointment at the current time uh, or in the current crisis, as far as my political colleagues in other uh, parties are concerned, it's not necessarily that they didn't stand up for PTI. It's very clear that people are afraid of the popularity that Imran Khan has. But when politicians don't stand up for fundamental things like basic human rights, when politicians don't stand up for the women prisoners who are, whose uh, access to justice is being denied by the bail processes being made a joke of, when politicians don't stand for the fundamental process of elections, which is our basis to compete with each other. And we have uh, caretaker dispensations in Punjab and KP for 260 odd days each then they're doing a disservice to their job. Uh, that I'm disappointed by. I'm confident that Pakistan will ultimately find a way out. Uh, I hope we just don't have to pay too heavy a price. Thank you so much, Temur Salim Jagra, for being with us on uh, 20 Minutes for Dawn News English. That's all for now. Take care and goodbye.